Hi everyone, I'm America Josh and welcome to the 23rd of September update with Travel Josh Angstrom from Liberty Travel. G'day Josh, how are you? Hey guys, hey Josh, thanks for joining thanks. everyone. No, thank you. This week we're going to be talking about the caps that have changed. There's been a recent change to the cap numbers and we're going to talk about the impact of that short term and long term. We're going to look at availability over the next three months. We're going to be looking at how airlines are responding and what they're talking about and we're going to be sort of asking questions about are you going to still be bumped now that we've increased these things? And finally, where you know what next? And then we're going to answer some listener questions, actually. Yeah, uh, so we've, got Josh, a couple, we've got a couple of good juicy questions this week. So we, we um, really do. It's uh, it's great to hear from everyone. So if you do have questions, please do head to americajosh.com forward slash travel josh, and we can answer them at the end of each week. Uh, and we work them into all the questions every week to make sure that we're answering what you guys are what you guys are thinking about. So. Yep. Josh, to kick things off, the caps were increased this week. So what does that mean for current and future bookings? Yeah, um, finally we got some good news this week with the caps and what's going on with everything. So the state governments and the federal government had a meeting on Friday and the outcome of the meeting was that the caps were going to be up by 2,000 uh, passengers a week. And that's going to be, interestingly enough, spread out a little bit more. Um, There's three main ports that are going to be the beneficiaries of this uh, increase of caps. So uh, Sydney is to get an extra 500 um, people per week um, able to land into Sydney. Brisbane is to be getting an extra um, 500 a week extra as well. And Perth is expected to get an extra 500 people per week. And then flight change to Adelaide, which is getting an extra 100 passengers per week. So that is really great news. I'm very happy to hear that. That's fantastic. Yeah, no, we were talking last week about, you know, we need to start changing these. So it's great to see that that's starting to happen. Is that the silver bullet? Is that going to fix everything immediately? Like, will we really see numbers level back out? Or what do you think? Well, I, I think the good news is is that perhaps anybody that's reached out to um, their local Australian consulate or embassy, I believe that those people most at risk are uh, financially or in terms of health. I think that there's going to be some extra seats given to those people because I believe that there is a bit of a backlog for people not in an emergency situation to repatriate. I believe that the increase in caps, uh, particularly because Brisbane and Perth are actually phased increases, so it's not like as of yesterday the caps have gone up. The caps are going to be not in full swing until October, that increase. So it's important to know that at the moment it's still incredibly difficult for um, people in North America to get back to Australia and this isn't a silver bullet for right now. As this progresses through the later part of the year and into next year, I think that it will definitely help, but immediately not so much. All right. So does that mean that are we still expecting to see people where we're hearing a lot of reports of people being bumped from flights? Is that something we can continue to expect for the next few weeks and months? Unfortunately, that is going to be the case, that people will continue to be bumped. So that isn't great news. Hopefully now that the caps are being increased, instead of the airline offering you a flight in three months' time when you get bumped, hopefully that means that if you do get bumped, you get a flight, you know, relatively close to the original date that you purchased. So fingers crossed that um, that happens. Okay. And are we seeing, what's the response from airlines? Do we expect them to put lots more flights on to sort of fulfil this or is it sort of going to stay effectively the same as it is but with some more capacity? That's a bit of a tricky one. I can I understand that there's obviously a bit of a sigh of relief coming from everyone, like, oh, okay, you know, the government's finally listening to us and they understand that the, the 4,000 cap is is really difficult. So that's really good news. I suppose at the other end of that, I suppose it's not going to necessarily be helping people that are trying to get home right now. Yeah, okay, gotcha. What are we expecting for, like, you know, the next three months? What are, what sort of your, we've been talking one month in advance, two months in advance, and now we're sort of thinking three months in advance. What are you seeing for the next three months in general? 
Well, there's a bit of good news around a few factors. It looks like that the airlines that were presuming to be starting to fly. So, for example, we've got Air Canada that are looking to fly direct into Brisbane starting on the 25th of October. They've been selling those flights for a while. So there's a bit of a sigh of relief, like, okay, now that Brisbane's increased the caps, hopefully that flight that I've already booked on Air Canada from Vancouver to Brisbane, hopefully now that will take place. And hopefully now I won't be bummed. Obviously, without that route taking place and and having success, and we can see a bit of stability there, I'm still a little bit trepidatious to start start letting clients book different airlines just yet. I'd stick to the ones that we're already booking a lot, American, United, um, and Delta. I would stick to booking with them for now. And then once those routes then open up and you can see traction that they are starting to run and that they are actually getting passengers into Australia, then then I would say, yeah, definitely now's the time to book. In terms of availability, I can see December's almost all gone completely. But if you're willing to wait until the new year, I found some really good fares in January going back to Sydney and the pricing is is very good. So if you're willing to bite the bullet and then spend the next couple of months where you are, in January is your next next part, your next opportunity to book some pretty decent economy fares home. Okay, fantastic. Uh, And when do we see the next review happening for the caps and the flights and, and flying into Australia in general? The 24th of October is still the date set for the next review. So these kind of fortnightly or weekly Friday meetings of Cabinet doesn't necessarily change that they're looking to update them in, in October as well. So these are it's kind of these are just kind of band-aids, I imagine, from people around the world putting their hand up saying this is unacceptable. So it sounds like these are kind of measures to help people that are stranded right now i guess if you're you know got a got a bit of stability full-time work that kind of thing i guess hold off until january if you don't want to pay a huge amount understood we do have two i was about to say listener but viewer questions so the first one is from tilly hi i'm a new recruit to america josh so i'm sorry if you've already heard this question not a problem tilly everyone there are no stupid questions in this classroom it is is it common for people to be bumped off their flights out of the usa to australia i'm booked to fly san francisco to sydney in november on united and i'm hearing horror stories of people arriving at the airport only to be bumped and unable to get another flight for weeks or months thanks yeah, that, that question I have been um, getting quite a lot. And there's a few things in your favour there, Tilly, I'll have to say. You've picked the most reliable route that I've um, had success with since March. So the San Francisco to Sydney route, well done, good choice. I haven't had anybody bumped on their way to the airport so much. So in terms of the airline that you've chosen for your flight home, I think that's a safe bet that even if you were to be bumped, and I'm not saying that you're not or you will be at this stage, I've had very few people bumped, so I could expect that the chance of you being bumped is quite minimal. I certainly wouldn't imagine you'd be in the cab going to the airport until you find out. The airlines are giving people as much time as possible to to make um, other plans. So I think you're onto a good wicket with United. I think that's a a good option. And I think you're 99.9% assured of getting home within uh, a few days of your intended travel date. Exclamation mark. (laughs) Fantastic. Uh, The second question was from Sten. Hi, Josh. Josh's. I've just had my fifth flight to Perth cancelled despite the cap increase. Cathay Pacific, November 2nd from Seattle. If I fly from Brisbane, uh, through Brisbane, I gather I'll have to quarantine there as it's my port of entry. What happens to my last flight leg from Brisbane to Perth? I'll have extra luggage and want to be able to push that last flight out until after quarantine without losing it. Are airlines allowing for that? I'm looking at flying Air Canada from Portland on November 2nd now. Thanks. 
I just want to say thank you for sending that question through because I hopefully my answer is going to help a variety of people out there that are looking to do the same thing. So as we mentioned just before, that route with Air Canada from Vancouver to Brisbane is still a little untested at the moment simply because it only starts on the 25th of October. So we'd hope by, by the time that you plan to leave in early November that the, the route has been tested and we can see passengers are getting through, it's all good. The next part of um, that issue is then getting from Brisbane to Perth after quarantine. And that's not an easy feat either at this point. So obviously you need to get permission to enter Perth, but also flights are quite limited then as well. My best advice to you at this stage is to contact Cathay Pacific. And now that we know that the Western Australia or the Perth cap is going to be increased in October to an extra 500 passengers per week coming through, that hopefully maybe Cathay Pacific will hopefully then have enough room to put you on one of those October or early November flights. And in which case you then wouldn't have to worry about that domestic flight at all. So contact Cathay Pacific, see what they say. And then by all means, feel free to reach out to me and we can then have a look and see where you're at after Cathay have answered if they can get you onto another flight in October, early November. That's my best advice to you. Awesome. Tilly, Sten, thank you very much for sending in your questions. And everyone else, if you are watching and you have a particular question that you'd like to ask Travel Josh from Liberty Travel, uh, head to americajosh.com forward slash Travel Josh, which is where Josh writes a blog every Wednesday and has updates about basically what we talk about today and elaborates on a few different things. Uh, and you can check that out at that link. So americajosh.com forward slash Travel Josh. Josh, thanks so much for joining us again and all your helpful insights. I'm sure not only Tilly and Sten will be happy with the, all the new news this week thank you yeah and hopefully i um answered the questions and if you have a few little sub questions um that go ahead uh, go along with that uh feel free to reach out to me personally as well just um send me a private message or whatever i'm happy to help fantastic thanks josh have a lovely week thanks guys